Hello there, welcome to Brian Lomax Movie Talk and my patron requested review of The Faculty. Uh, so yeah, my patron Matt Kelly requested this one, a good friend of mine in fact. Uh, I actually used to share a flat with, with, with Matt, so yeah, we go back quite a long way. Um, went to my wedding and everything, so yeah, so I, someone I know and very much appreciate. And yeah, he, he requested The Faculty. Uh, this is a film I used to love and I watched it an awful lot and it goes back to obviously the Scream era when Scream kind of revitalised not just the slasher genre but really the horror genre. It made horror cool again. The writer of Scream is on board for this, penning the script. He didn't come up with a story though. The story uh, it was, it was done by a couple of other writers and obviously because Williamson was fresh off the success of Scream. He was the, the go-to writer for this kind of movie. It is directed by Robert Rodriguez and pretty much done everything else by Robert Rodriguez. Yeah, he edited this, he did the sound on a lot of it. Um, the guy is just, yeah, a one-man movie-making machine. I know he has, like, Troublemaker Studios in his own home. So, yeah, this is, this is a guy who very hands-on filmmaker. Seeing this coming out, being aware of Rodriguez, thinking he was a pretty good director at the time, uh, still do, you know, um, and then seeing Williamson's name attached to it, I, I got quite excited. And obviously as well, being a big sci-fi fan, I was in. And, and I, like I say, I loved it. I thought it was great. But the question is, has it held up? Does it, does it hold up today uh, when you, when you look at you know, the horror landscape, the sci-fi landscape today. So uh, I, I'm going to say the answer to that, the simple answer to that is no, not quite. However, it is still very entertaining. Obviously, for those who don't know, it, it's basically Invasion of the Body Snatchers meets a John Hughes movie, you know. So it, it takes place in a high school, a uh, very unrealistic high school, it must be said. It's like the clique kind of mentality of high school but ramped up to 11 big time uh, we've got teachers in this school who quite frankly should not be there we've got one played by Famke Janssen um, and, and so they make her character this kind of really shy put upon teacher who, who is very nervous around the students and, and I'm just like how are you even in this school how did you even become a teacher You've got no power, no authority whatsoever, um, and you get pushed around by these students. And obviously, it's very purposeful because they want to show that when she be, you know, becomes an alien kind of replicant or whatever you want to call them, she's she yeah she takes on a new life. She 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 becomes confident or this that and the other. But I just think it's it's so on the nose. It's so heavy handed in the delivery of what, of how they do it. Uh, you know, it's, it's just yeah. It's, it's a bit extreme, um, and, and that's, that can be said for much of the characters in this film. Like I say, you take those John Hughes kind of archetypes and you just ramp them up to 11. Um, so the script for this as well, it's, it's not quite on the level of Scream, and I don't know if that is because uh, it wasn't Williamson who you know, came came up with the inception so to speak you know this isn't a story that came from his mind he's taken on someone else's story and written a script to it but even so i feel like his dialogue at times gets a little bit grating like the, the kids talk kids all played by 20 somethings whatever uh but they, they all talk in in yeah just ways that are just highly unbelievable um, and I get that that's, that's a style, you know, in much the same way that Aaron Sorkin has a style. Uh, people talk in an Aaron Sorkin movie in, in, in a way that people wouldn't really talk in real life. But there's a, there's a high level intelligent, of intelligence there, I feel. And I feel like that level of intelligence isn't quite evident in, in a, uh, a Kevin Williamson script. Not that he isn't an intelligent guy, don't get me wrong. Um, for, for whatever reason, what he did with Scream, his language, his style, it worked. And when you put it here, it, it, it I don't know, it just, I feel like it's just not aged as well. I, I can watch Scream and it's, it still works for me. Whereas this film, I feel like the kids are, are 
too knowing. They're too clever for their own good. You know, you've got this character, Zeke, who is a drug dealer who, you know, this, again, the whole school knows this guy is dealing drugs. He's, 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 he's a guy who's been pushed back a few years. He seems to want to stay in school for whatever reason. How he gets away with it, I don't know. It's just, it's far too much of a stretch, given that, like I say, everyone seems to know this guy's a drug dealer and yet he's still on school grounds. So you've got all these different kids who come from different cliques in the school who, who shouldn't really be together, shouldn't really gel together, but they're forced to kind of work together because they discover that there is an alien invasion that is taking place within their school. Uh, you know, they're, they're coming through the back door, so to speak, as it is said in one point, rather than the big Independence Day style invasion, they're sneaking in through the back door in places like schools and stuff. So yeah, th th there's... It's kind of like a parasitic thing, so, you know, whereas Invasion of the Body Snatchers, they would literally replicate the body in, in this, that there is there is a parasitic kind of organism that, you know, once inside you, be, it becomes a part of you, it takes over you. And that typical trope that I, I kind of don't like, where you kill the queen, you kill them all, and it's just, yeah, you've got one character who is a sci-fi nerd, not kind of geek, and she... She's the one who comes out with all these theories because she's seen them in science fiction films and stuff and they just so happen to be true and she's the one who says, yeah, you know, there, there must be a queen, let's kill the queen. And it's just like, there's no hard kind of science or detective work that is done with these kids to find out what is going on. It's just like, yeah, we saw this in a science fiction movie, so we'll go with that. And it turns out to be true. And it's just like, it's a bit weak. I would say, in, in the writing department, in, in, in the mechanics of the plot, so to speak. Um, but I get that it is playing into the tropes of science fiction movies, you know, films like The Thing and Invasion of the Body Snatchers and, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, uh, I, I, I li you know, I like a lot of the nods. I think there's some pretty good special effects in it. Um, Laura Harris, I don't know what's happened to her, to be honest. She had a bit of a promising career. I really loved her in the third season of 24, actually. Or second, second season of 24. Second, yeah. Um, and, and she's pretty good here. Uh, but, yeah, I've, I've not seen her really in anything since, I don't think. It's a good cast of actors, uh, but I think a few of the characters, one in particular, is really annoying. Um, so you get this character played by Jordana Brewster. She's the you know the typical head cheerleader type, who's you know queen bee and all that. And she ends so so at the end of the film, she ends up getting with the the, the the proper geeky kid played by Elijah Wood. You know the one who in these kind of movies they, they never really would be together, and yet you know in these kind of movies they always seem to get together because they they realise that you know they 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 shouldn't be at each other's throats and this, that and the other, but, but it's not handled very well. Her character throughout this entire film, quite frankly, t to put it mildly, is a bit of a bitch. And she never really does anything to redeem herself from that. Um, she's always just really bitchy to this Elijah Wood character and to everyone else around her. And then we find out that she's, you know, spoilers by the way you know for a film that's 20 years old um that you know we, that, then we find out she's infected at one point and, and it's just like okay great but once 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 she becomes uninfected there's no real reason she would get together with elijah wood's character and more importantly if this guy's got any stones about him there's no real reason he should get together with her other than for bragging rights. Um, and, and I kind of don't see him as that kind of character. Um, you know, there's, there's nothing about him in the film that would tell me he's that kind of person. So, yeah, the fact that they end up together at the end isn't something that I, I'm sat there cheering, going, yeah, the geek, the you know, got the got the, the head queen bee, whatever. I'm just I'm just sat there thinking, why? She's she was nothing but a bitch the whole way through, and and she hasn't really done anything to redeem herself. So. Yeah, um, her character was annoying. They could have done more there, I think, to give you a reason to want those two to get together. They could have put a redemptive quality within her, but they just don't. All that aside, there is some really good stuff in here. You know, I, I do like the concept 
I do like the way mostly that it plays out. I think some of the characters, some of the actors are having a real blast with their roles, particularly Robert Patrick. Um, you know, there's, there's T-1000. I, I, don't, I don't think Patrick has ever kind of broken away from that T-1000 mold with anything, you know, that, uh, of great significance. Uh, that's coming from an X-Files fan, you know. Uh, I, I really like Robert Patrick, but he's never been able to kind of break away from the more B-movie kind of vibe that, that he has as an actor. But I do think he is great in this film. I think he's got some pretty good comic timing. I think he's quite menacing. And he he is a very good physical actor. He always has been. It's one of the, the main things that, he, that was so great about him in uh, Terminator 2. Uh, and I think here he does a lot of kind of physical you know, presence within his character. He, you know, he's the, he's the coach, the stereotypical coach. He, he really wants, you know, to win at all costs and stuff. And 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 he obviously becomes infected by the alien. He's he's, he's one of the first to become infected. Um, but I just think, yeah, Patrick is on form with this one. If you know, if if if, if you want to say he's got form, then he's got it here. Um, so yeah, I, 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 for me, is probably the standout actually in the film. Piper Laurie, as well as Miss Olsen, is really creepy. She's got the infected by an alien vibe down really well. Uh, something about her eyes in certain scenes where there's just a blackness in them, a coldness that is in them. Uh, she, she's out of all the the teachers, out of the cast of, of teachers, she's the one that that screams alien. You know, when you when you see her, um, and because. She starts off as this kind of innocent, seemingly innocent woman. Uh, yeah, when it when it comes when she's when she's revealed to be infected, um, yeah, she she plays it well. I I do think that when we see, when we have the scene at the beginning where it's revealed that she's infected, it doesn't make a right lick of sense to be honest because. She kind of helps this this other teacher to get out of the school, away from Robert Patrick's character, and then kills her and I can only assume she was infected at that point so I, I don't get why she didn't yeah unless the the parasitic life form within her hadn't quite taken full hold yet I don't know but it's again it's never truly explained because everything's just a little bit kind of yeah uh, just not hard science or anything we'll just we'll just we've seen stuff in science fiction films so we'll, we'll just run with that there's a few decent action sequences in it as well uh, I, I like the Reveal of John Stewart's teacher character and what happens with him is a nice gag with a pen, a pen in the eye, um, which is, is, is referred back to as well in the end credits, which is quite nice. His character is uh, he's not in it much, but he's quite amusing. I think I think John Stewart brings uh, obviously he is a comedian um, and he, he brings some humour some levity through that role I think. Uh. So I do like the faculty uh, again the, the concept I really like I like a lot of the direction by Rodriguez he keeps it quite snappy the editing is tight on it um, I just think that the dialogue sometimes is a little bit too heavy a little bit too knowing a little bit too clever for its own good um, and I don't really believe most of these characters to be honest they don't feel like real people to me um again i think that's something that comes with age because as a teenager i loved this film i really loved it um this would have been like a four four and a half star film for me as a teenager uh, I, I i just think it's i think it's age really um that plays a part in that i don't i don't really identify with with these people now uh, and I think perhaps maybe I did maybe I end I identified with these characters more as a teenager uh, you know particularly being in school and all that so that could have something to do with it um, but now being a 40 odd being a 40 year old guy uh, you know with kids looking at this I'm just kind of like I'm past it I think it's still a good film though but just not one of Rodriguez's best, I don't think. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to give it a three out of five. Um, as I say, entertaining, and if you're at the right age, Mark, I, I think you'll probably get a lot more out of it. Uh, but if you have seen The Faculty uh, and you think I'm full of it, then please do comment below. Let me know your thoughts 
on the film uh, and thank you to Matt obviously for, for being a patron but also just for, for being a good friend um, and yeah thank you for watching this video and until next time cracking